the mysterious period of the Anthropocene. Pleistocene. The Anthropocene period is considered the shortest in the entire history of the Earth. This period began about 2 million years ago and continues to this day. Some of the main characters of this time were snails. Incredible! Of course, these creatures did not top the food chain and were almost invisible in the world, but they played an important role in the modern world. And they still play. Along with terrestrial mollusks, we find typical and alpine types of soft-bodied species in glacial deposits. Bivalves were in are found today in freshwater basins of African lakes and rivers. We can also observe these familiar creatures in various bodies of water around the world. Enough talking about snails. Let's talk about more interesting inhabitants of the Pleistocene era. One of the most interesting reptiles of the Pleistocene were land-running crocodiles. Quincana, my dear friend, is an extinct genus of Australian crocodilomorphs in the family Mecosuchians, close relatives of modern crocodiles. The greatest diversity of crocodile species could be observed in the distant Triassic period, but the Quincans appeared much later, at the end of the Oligocene, this is approximately 23 million years ago. Scientists have discovered four species of quincan. The size of these monsters was impressive. The smallest of the species reached 3 meters in length, and the largest quincana was almost 7 meters long. But these crocodiles inspired horror not with their size, but with other abilities. These ancient predators did not sit in ambush in a reservoir for several days. Quincans walked through the forests of Australia like terrible maniacs in search of victims, and any animal that stood in the way of these monsters was doomed to death. This killer was helped by long legs located directly under the body, and not on the sides, like in real crocodiles. It was impossible to escape from this reptile by running away, because the Quincana ran quickly, like an ostrich. No, slow down a little. If you think that you could hide in a lake or river from this monster, then you would be making a big mistake. Quincana was an excellent swimmer. One could only fly away from this predator. Rejoice, birds! How was Quincana different from the modern crocodile? These were teeth. Any crocodile that we can observe today hunts in the following way. The teeth of modern reptiles have a rounded conical shape. With such teeth, the predator pierces the prey and tears off parts of the body in small pieces. Quincana's teeth were capable of cutting its prey into even pieces. This is how we cut butter and vegetables today. Quincans shared their territories with other equally dangerous predators of that time. Palinarchus, this crocodile was the king of the Australian swamps at the beginning of the Anthropocene period. Unlike the Quincana, this predator sometimes behaved like an ordinary crocodile. The five-meter-long Palinarchus lay calmly, immersed in the swamp slurry, and waited for a gaping animal to pass nearby. And only hunger forced this giant to sprint over a long distance. Another interesting reptile of the Pleistocene was the huge Australian monitor lizard, seven meters long. The name of this animal is Megalania. Megalania was almost twice the size of a modern Komodo dragon. It was an active predator that attacked any animal that could not escape or hide under its shell. Megalania became extinct about 40,000 years ago. This happened when the first people arrived on the continent. There is no doubt that for them the gigantic monitor lizard was one of the most Russian enemies as well as a competitor for food resources. However, there is no direct evidence of deliberate human hunting for Megalania. This is Myelania, a very interesting turtle that lived in the Pleistocene in Australia. This giant was two and a half meters long and weighed 900 kilograms. Myelania's head was decorated with powerful horns. The long tail was armed with armored rings and spikes. 
so far no one has figured out whether this was a weapon or an ornament. Science is silent about this. There were several other species of myelania, but other species were smaller and not as well armed. Horned turtles disappeared at the end of the Pleistocene. This happened due to serious climate changes and the appearance of people in these places who gradually populated the territory of Australia. As you know, the continent called Australia was isolated from the outside world for a long time. Animals could not get there and the diversity of living creatures on the mainland was limited. Later in the Pliocene, Australian forests and grasslands were inhabited by bats and rodents. Australia's indigenous marsupial hosts have gradually evolved into a variety of highly unusual forms. In the Pleistocene, giant kangaroos three meters high appeared. Wombat-shaped animals the size of a hippopotamus appeared. It was a diprotodon or marsupial hippopotamus, genus diprotodon. A huge herbivore from Australia. The largest individuals reached 3 meters in length and almost 2 meters in height. Sometimes scientists call this animal a giant wombat. It lived in open grass pastures and woodlands, most likely not far from water bodies. By the end of the Pleistocene, Diprotodon became extinct. This happened about 18,000 years ago. Another representative of that time is the marsupial lion. It was a very strange animal. The animal reached the size of a modern jaguar. The jaws of Phylocolio carnifex were as powerful as those of a lion. Powerful muscles testify to the enormous strength of this beast. There is no doubt that this beast was capable of felling the largest herbivores on the continent. The marsupial lion hunted diprotodons and giant kangaroos. The animal could sit on its hind legs, supported by a strong tail, as kangaroos do, and could climb trees like a leopard. The marsupial lion disappeared 30,000 years ago, at the same time as the rest of the Australian megafauna. Unique birds also lived in Australia. Geniornis. Ostrich-like flightless birds. The height of this bird reached 2 meters, weighed up to 200 kilograms. It lived in the forests and steppes of Australia and became extinct 30,000 years ago. Geniornis was most likely a herbivore. There is a version that these unique birds could have disappeared because of people who were actively populating the mainland at that time. Recently, I was rock paintings of these birds, as well as the Tasmanian tiger, giant echidna, kangaroo and marsupial taper were found. One of New Zealand's most famous extinct birds was the flightless Mao bird. Some of them were no larger than a modern emu, but representatives of the genus Dinornis reached a height of more than three and a half meters and weighed a quarter of a ton. In the unique nature of New Zealand, which did not know mammals, moa occupied the ecological niche of large ungulates. The number of moas began to steadily decline after the arrival of the first settlers on the island, the Polynesians, who gave rise to the Maori tribe. People actively hunted these not too fast and stupid birds, and as a result, the last representatives of moa became extinct around the 16th century AD. Host's Eagle, Harpagornis moray. It was the largest eagle in the entire history of the Earth. The flying giant hunted Mao's flightless birds. When the Mao became extinct, this species of eagles also did not last long because the main source of food disappeared. Hosta became extinct around the same time as Mao. There were three species of huge lemurs living in Madagascar. Adult Megalodapus edwardsi were the size of a large orangutan, and the animal's skull with powerful jaws reached a length of 30 centimeters. Ancient lemurs were herbivores and led approximately the same lifestyle as modern koalas. Megalodapus existed for quite a long time and became extinct about 500 years ago due to active hunting and deforestation. There were several other genera of giant lemurs. A 
Another species of lemur, the huge Archaeoindris fontoinanti, weighed about 180 kilograms and occupied an ecological niche in Madagascar close to South American ground sloths. Another species, Paleopropithecus ingens, was the size of a chimpanzee and lived in trees, where it ate succulent fruits and leaves. Like Megalodapus, it became extinct in historical times not without the active help of humans. Among the birds that lived in Madagascar, the most interesting are Epiornis. These were the Madagascar equivalents of the flightless moa. The largest Epiornis were over 3 meters tall and weighed 500 kilograms. Such individuals were the heaviest birds on Earth. The Epiornis egg was up to 35 centimeters long and the size of 160 chicken eggs. Before the settlement of Madagascar by humans, Epornis had no serious enemies. The exception was crocodiles. This is the island of Mauritius, located in the Indian Ocean. The famous dodo birds lived on this island. But 400 years ago, sailors arriving on the island began to hunt these peaceful giants for their meat. In the 16th century, the Dutch brought pigs and monkeys to Mauritius, and the animals began to eat dodo eggs and their chicks. And then dodos completely disappeared from the face of the earth. In fact, all that remains of these large flightless pigeons are two heads, two feet, and a few skeletons, stored in various places, museums in Europe. But although no living person has ever seen a dodo, scientists know a lot about the creature's lifestyle, since ancient ship logs and notes from travelers who visited Mauritius have reached us before the last of these birds became extinct 300 years ago. South America had its own world of animals. This world was no less strange and amazing than the Australian one. Several genera of giant ground sloths survived before humans arrived in the New World. The largest of them, Aramotherium, reached a length of 6 meters and a weight of 3 tons. These strange animals lived in open spaces. In the savannas and woodlands of South America, in the south of North America, and on the islands of the Caribbean. Aramotherium ate plant matter. Adult Aramotherium was practically invulnerable to predators. The skin of ground sloths contained small bone plaques that looked like chain mail. Neither a saber-toothed tiger nor a human spear could pierce the skin of a sloth. And the huge claws on the front paws were such a terrible weapon that if an enemy approached too close a distance, the Aramotherium itself became a dangerous enemy. In addition to the indicated 6-meter giant, several smaller varieties survived until the late Pleistocene. These sloths were about the size of a cow and weighed up to 300 kilograms. Ground sloths disappeared at the same time as all American megafauna, about 10,000 years ago. Giant armadillos also lived at the same time as giant sloths. Glyptodon clavipes, the most famous of them, reached a length of 3 meters, and Doodicurus clavicaudatus, more than 3.5 meters, was armed with a bone mace with spikes on its tail. These giants were clumsy herbivorous creatures, reliably protected from the dangerous fangs of saber-toothed cats and the powerful beaks that disappeared a little earlier than the four rocos. Giant armadillos became extinct 10 to 11,000 years ago. These animals were hunted by people and jaguars, which greatly contributed to the rapid extinction of the population of these animals. Macrachenia patagonica, an amazing mammal from South America that looked like a camel or a llama, but was not related to them. Macrachenia patagonica was about 2 meters tall and weighed more than a ton. The animal was distinguished by a relatively long neck, a wide foot with three supporting toes with something like hooves, and a small proboscis, with the help of which Macrachenia picked leaves and grass in the savannas and woodlands of Pleistocene America. Macrachenia became extinct at the end of the Pleistocene 10,000 years ago. 
This was due to climate change, active persecution by the first Americans and displacement by North American animals, which gradually colonized the southern continent. No tungulate. It was the South American equivalent of hippopotamuses and rhinoceroses. A relative of Notungulata was Toxodon. In the vastness of North America, there were two species of long-legged, short-faced bears. Unlike the relatively clumsy and omnivorous brown, black and cave bears, the giant flat-faced bear Arctodus simus was a true predator and active hunter, capable of catching up and killing very large prey. These were elk, camels, bison, and young mammoths. The size of the bear was impressive. Height it withers 1.6 meters. The height when standing on its hind legs is more than 3 meters, and its weight is up to a ton. At that time, there were two kinds of saber-tooths. Smilodon and Homotherium. Smilodon, the classic saber-toothed tiger. The predator was the size of a large lion and lived in North and South America. Homotherium was slightly smaller. Homotherium differs from Smilodon in having shorter fangs and a lighter build. This predator lived in Africa, Eurasia, and North America. Hundreds of thousands of years ago, a species appeared on the continent that people would later call the dire wolf. Canis dirus. The predator was larger and more massive than the gray wolf, one and a half meters long and weighing up to 80 kilograms. Canis dirus had shorter legs and larger teeth. It was a pack predator that hunted very large animals such as horses and bison. Giant beaver Castoroids ohioensis. The length of the beaver reached two and a half meters, and the weight could reach 220 kilograms. In addition to its size, the giant beaver differed from the usual in its narrower tail, similar to the tail of a muskrat, and huge teeth protruding from the gums by almost 15 centimeters. In the skies of Pleistocene America, one could meet teratorns. These are huge vultures, related to modern condors. The wingspan of the largest of them, Argentavis, could reach 8 meters. This is a record among flying birds. However, Argentavis lived in the Miocene. In the Pleistocene, small relatives lived from the genera Teratornis and Iolornis. The wingspan of small vultures could reach only about 5 meters. The lifestyle of Teratorns was the same as that of modern vultures and condors, only with the difference that they fed primarily on the corpses of not antelopes and bison, but various thick-skinned giants. Yes, they were elephants and giant sloths. Tenatornas became extinct along with the entire American megafauna about 10,000 years ago, when the animals that provided the food supply for predators became extinct. Ornomegalonyx odoroi, a giant, poorly flying owl. He is about one meter tall and weighs about nine kilograms. This bird became extinct 8,000 years ago. Animals were born, evolved, and died in entire species and families. One of the main factors in the death of entire groups was ice ages. Many animals died during migration and the sudden cooling of the climate. When the herbivores died after them and the predators died of hunger. Any little thing in the history of the Earth is important. Some mammals adapted to extreme cold by developing thicker fur, which served them as better insulation during severe frosts. A time traveler visiting one of the Pleistocene glaciations in the Northern Hemisphere would have seen a frozen world inhabited by many woolly mammals. Among them were woolly rhinoceroses and mammoths, reindeer with very thick fur and shaggy musk oxen. Why were all these animals large? Everything is very simple. The surface area of the body is less than the volume of the body. Small mammals follow this rule. 
In cold climates, heat in small animals evaporates from the body faster than in large animals, and small animals freeze faster. For larger animals, things are a little different. Typically, larger animals live in cold climates, while their smaller relatives are found in warmer areas of the globe. For example, among bears the largest is the polar bear living in the Arctic. This is one of the largest modern land predators. The weight of a polar bear reaches 650 kilograms. But the Malayan bear from the tropical forests of Southeast Asia weighs about 10 times less than its polar counterpart. The small size of the Malayan bear is the result of adaptation to a warm climate. In turn, the polar bear's huge body is better adapted to the harsh polar climate. The height of the woolly mammoth at the shoulder was almost 3 meters. The enormous size of the fossil animal, like its shaggy fur, helped retain heat inside the body in order to survive in the cold north. Mammoths even lived beyond the Arctic Circle. And in Sicily there lived a close relative of the mammoth. This is a dwarf elephant, more than four times smaller in size than its northern counterpart. Perhaps the small body size evolved as a result of life on the island. Due to its height, this small elephant lost significantly more heat than a mammoth, which was not unnecessary in a hot climate. But the African elephant seems to violate this general rule. The African elephant has a huge body and lives in the tropics. But remember about the wide ears of this elephant. Every time an African elephant flaps its ears, its body surface area increases by about 20%. Optical illusion. Have we been lied to all along? Over the course of 37 million years, elephants gradually increased in size. Some species of elephants became the largest land animals of the Quaternary period. Development of a long trunk, huge tusks, and strong molars. This is a result of climate change. During this period, Many different types of lawns who lived on four continents. Elephants that moved to isolated islands eventually became dwarf animals. This happened with stegodons on islands in Indonesia, mammoths on Wrangel Island and the Channel Islands. This happened with elephants on the islands of the Mediterranean Sea. The height of these elephants barely reached one meter. At the beginning of the Pleistocene, Archidiscodon planifrons and the southern elephant Archidiscodon meridionalis grazed peacefully in the forests of Asia and southern Europe. Among these elephants were giants and dwarfs, as well as smooth-skinned and woolly species. The largest elephant of all time was the steppe mammoth Trogontherii, who lived at the end of the Pliocene and beginning of the Pleistocene. The height of this mammoth at the withers reached four and a half meters. This is a full meter taller than the largest African elephant of our time. The tusks of the steppe mammoth grew up to five meters. The woolly mammoth Mammothus primogeneus lived in the tundra and was a typical representative of the glacial fauna. The animal was cold-loving. Scientists have often found frozen corpses in the permafrost soils of Siberia. At the opposite end of the scale is a dwarf relative the size of an average pig. During one of the ice ages, the mammoth crossed the ice of the Bering Strait and at the end of the Pleistocene it spread widely throughout North America. The direct ancestor of the woolly mammoth was the Trogontaria elephant, Mammothus trogontherii. This animal lived in the steppes of the Middle Pleistocene. The Trogontherian elephant evolved from the early Pleistocene southern elephant Archidiscodon meridionalis. During the Pleistocene, species of elephants related to the European mammoth lived in North America, including the giant Mammothus imperator and the small elephant Mammothus columbi. It is interesting that the Mastodon, which became extinct in Europe at the end of the Pliocene, survived all ice ages in North America. This species, Mastodon americanus, lived on the American continent just a few thousand years ago and was contemporary with humans. More than 200 Mastodon skeletons have been found in New York State alone. 
At the end of the Pleistocene, about 8,000 years ago, all mammoths suddenly became extinct. Mammoths alone, naturally, were unable to adapt to a warmer climate after the Great Ice Age had passed. Others may have been exterminated by humans for their meat. Other representatives of proboscis pygmy elephants survived until the beginning of the Holocene. As a result, now, out of all the great diversity of proboscideans, only a few living species can be found. Other heavyweights of the Pleistocene were rhinoceroses. Woolly rhinoceros, Coelodonta antiquitatus, the second most famous Pleistocene animal after the mammoth. The length of the rhinoceros reached three and a half meters, and the weight was up to three tons. The ancient rhinoceros had two horns on its face. The longest front horn could reach more than one meter in length. An important feature of this species is the long, thick fur of the bird. It's a mammoth color. Long hair allowed the rhinoceros to survive in northern and central Eurasia, which was inhospitable for heat-loving animals. The woolly rhinoceros lived on cold plains called mammoth steppes. In place of these plains, there are now coniferous and broad-leaved forests. This species became extinct about 10,000 years ago, and possibly later. In the earliest Pleistocene of Europe, Merck's rhinoceroses, Dicerorhinus kirchbergensis and Elasmotherium grazed in the forests side by side with forest elephants. Merck's rhinoceros apparently descends from the somewhat older Dicerorhinus etruscus. Elasmotherium was truly a gigantic beast. The animal's height reached about two and a half meters, and its weight was up to six tons. There was only one horn on the animal's head, but this horn could supposedly reach up to two meters in length. Both of these animals went extinct before the woolly rhinoceros. However, a number of researchers are confident that relict populations of Elasmotherium and Merck's rhinoceroses survived until the very end of the Pleistocene and met with ancient people. Thank you for watching this episode to the end. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, do it right now. Well, don't forget to click on the bell so you don't miss new and interesting releases from the Real Unreal channel.